right here. Huh. <laughs> That's useful, I know. Uh... Interesting. Brady, you said you had this problem, but then it went away. Yeah, this was ha this happened to me yesterday, and it, it was weird for like five minutes. But I didn't like do anything, and it just like went away. And like Nodemon just like was able to kick back in without any errors. Did you restart? Okay. <clears throat> I didn't restart my, I think I did like close out VS code and just like open it back, like unplugged, pre-plugged kind of thing. Um, but I didn't like restart my computer or anything. I mean, I wonder if I like. You wanna, yeah, could you, yeah. Yeah. I'm gone. You just, yeah. <clears throat> cool. Yeah. There All you right. go. Sweet. Hopefully nothing happens. <laughs> yep, you're, you're probably okay. Stack overflow was happening because of the VARs, in my opinion. <laughs> Just the, your global scope is overly populated. Right. Maybe. Who knows? We are better now. Is that a property of Express that's doing that? Like all the VARs? Uh, it's the Express generator is doing that, yes. Okay. All right, we're all back together now. Let's let's do this. So we added our event listener so that we can see when we're connected uh, to our port. Um, now let's go ahead and we're going to skip the uh, preview questions. There, those aren't that important. Um, let's go ahead and create a module for our schema, our model. Right. Then we're going to define a basic schema for the movie model, and then we'll take a short break. So let's make a directory for it, mkdir models. And inside of that, we're going to touch our movie.js. Remember, uh, your model is going to be the only singularly named file that you have. So we're going to touch models slash movie.js. And inside of that, we're going to define the schema. We're going to compile the schema into a model, and we're going to export that model. So let's start. We're going to need Mongoose, right? And we can import Mongoose wherever we want in our application, right? Because it doesn't matter how many times we have it. But we're going to need it in this module. So let's import it. Const Mongoose equals require Mongoose. And we're going to make a shortcut to the mongoose schema class because we're going to use it a couple times. So let's do that. Let's say const schema equal capital S on that schema equal to mongoose mob goose mongoose. Wow, I cannot type dot capital schema. So now that we've got that shortcut set up, we can create a very, very basic schema for our movie model. So let's call it movie schema. Const movie schema equals new schema. And let's open it up. Again, we talked about the different properties, right? Key value pairs. These are the, this is how our data is going to be organized. So let's give our, each of our movies is going to have a title, which will be the data type string. They'll have a release year, which will be data type number. It'll have an MPAA rating, which will be a string. And it's going to have a cast. Here's where we get tricky. The cast is going to be an array of strings. A property is referred to as a path or as a field. 
So this is going to be a field. A field is a, a cast member is a field. MPAA rating is a field. Okay. So I, um, we want to make sure that we have a also a now showing with a type of Boolean. Uh, that's silly to make you go do that on your own, but let's let's do that now showing. Boolean. So we can add that in there too. It has to be uppercase. If you do lowercase, it's not going to work. So we've got our schema, right? There are a bunch of different built in types for properties that are listed here. You've got string, number, Boolean, date, array, mongoose.schema.types.objectID. We're going to be using that one. We're going to be using that for referencing. And then these other ones are, um, uh, th these are not built in JavaScript types, but uh, you're not going to see a lot of these last ones um, or these last two. Uh, schema.types.mixed, you can put in all sorts of crazy data to it, but we're not, we're not going to use that because all of our stuff's going to be organized in nice, neat uh, data types like this. So now that we have this schema, we need to export it into a model so that we're able to use that model to perform CRUD data uh, or CRUD operations on our data. So let's do that. Let's we know how to export module.exports, right? Module.exports equals, we're going to export it as a model, mongoose.model. We're going to call it movie, capital M. And we're, it, the thing that we're exporting as the movie is our movie schema. That's the syntax for that. So the mongoose model method is going to be exporting something called movie that contains our movie schema. So now what we'll be able to do is inside of our controller functions, when we're creating and uh, we're updating and reading and deleting all of our data, all of our CRUD operations, they're going to be using this schema to do it, but we're going to be exporting it as movie. So when we start writing our controller functions, we'll have movie.create. Instead of having to do all that stuff in the shell, Mongoose just lets us say, okay, we're importing it as a movie model. So we can do movie.create. Or if we want to find a movie by its ID, we can say movie.findbyid. Um, those are the different Mongoose methods that we're going to learn this afternoon. I'm going to push. Does anybody have any questions? No question? OK. Let's take uh, 10. Be back in 10 minutes. So now that we have our model, we are able to create, read, update, and delete data. So it makes sense before we try to read any data that we would create some data. That's our first step. And there are a couple different ways to handle this. We're going to eventually like be using Mongoose to do that. Um, but what I want to show, well, we're going to be using Mongoose right now to do that. Um, but what I want to show you is how to use the movie that we've just exported to create data in a REPL, uh, in the node REPL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to kill that terminal. I'm going to kill that server. I guess I have to leave that server running. We're going to do this. In our terminal, we're going to go node. We're going to run that. We're going to require. If you get lost on this part, or if you fall behind on this part, or make a mistake typing something, that's totally fine. This is just demonstrating that we can do this through the REPL. Um, 
one, even the slightest typo will mess this up and prevent you from being able to enter data, which is why we don't do it this way. But I just wanna show you that this is possible. So config slash database. So we're gonna require that, closing quote. Okay, so we're connected. Then we are going to Weird that it gave me an error there. There it is, sorry. Const, we're gonna say movie equals require our movie model. Models slash movie. So now we have, if we type movie, we'll see that we're storing our movie as a uh, an object. So we have access to the properties on that. So if we want to use that to do something productive, we can say movie.create. We're gonna break this across multiple lines, just like we have in the past. So we're gonna create a movie, we're gonna give it a title of Star Wars. You can enter whatever movie you want with a comma, release year, 1977. Actually, we're not going to put a closing bracket there. We will close that out. And then you'll notice the next thing that comes up is this error first callback function. And this is just the syntax for Mongoose. After using a create function, we have to handle it with the callback function that comes afterwards. So that after the document is created, we're going to use that callback function to either render, redirect, move on to the next step. We're doing it asynchronously. So that it waits until after the document's been manipulated to do whatever comes next. So we're going to say function ERR, comma, DOC. Doc is just, we're just calling that the document. We're gonna console log that. Console log doc. And then we will close that out. And you're gonna see that what's get, what pops up here is our console log. And that we just created a movie with an empty cast, gave it an ID, an object ID, a title, and a release year. You'll notice that that cast is populated even though we didn't fill anything in. Because that's our, our model says that, hey, that has to have a string or a, an array in it. So it popped up. Um, we didn't provide a value for not showing, for now showing. So it didn't create that property or create that as a property in the document. However, the properties of type array are always initialized to an empty array. Um, doing so makes it convenient to start pushing performers into it. So, yay, that's good, right? Because if this is gonna be an array of strings, we have to initialize it as an array so that we're able to then push things into it. Mongoose, Mongoose takes care of that for us. That was fun. Okay, so control C twice to exit the REPL and you're good to go. So what we talked about yesterday uh, and the day before are the five steps of imp implementing CRUD functionality. And I just want to read over these one more time with y'all um, so that we can kind of go over this one more time before we start getting into it. And we're going to be going over these every single day for the next couple of weeks. Um, but step one is to determine the proper route, whatever the HTTP method and endpoint are. Make sure to use RESTful conventions whenever possible. And I believe I've got our chart all ready to go. Uh, we're gonna add the UI, either a link or a form that triggers the HTTP request that matches that route. Then we're gonna define the route in the appropriate router module that matches the request and maps it to a controller. And that controller method is going to perform whatever functionality we want. Then we're gonna code out the controller action slash method. We're gonna make sure that it's being exported properly. And then in that controller, we're gonna perform the necessary CRUD action. 
then either render uh, in the case of a get request or redirect if data has been mutated. So if we're putting, posting, or deleting, typically you'll end up with a redirect rather than a render. If rendering, code the view template if you don't already have it. So those are our five steps. So again, yesterday we talked about how data, uh, creating data is sometimes a two request process because the first thing that we need to do is display a form for the user to enter the data. The next thing that we have to do is ha handle when the, the request is submitted when that form gets sent to the server. So let's talk about the new movie form. We got we to gotta do this first part here. We're going to do five steps for this one. We're going to do five steps for this one. We want to make our, uh, our route for a new movie form. A user enters a new movie. You can see on our chart, that's a non-restful, i.e. a crudless route to slash post slash new, or in this case, slash movie slash new. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a get request to slash movie slash new. So we're, it's, this says you do. We're just going to do this together. So we're going to go into our views, into our index.ejs, and we're going to put an A tag that um, will trigger that HTTP request. It should say something like new movie. So let's do that. Let's go in here. And let's put an A tag. Slash movies slash new new movie. All right, and we can, should be able to see that here on our form if we refresh new movie. Next thing we want to do is define that route on the server. So Express stubbed us up this users document, right? Or this users route, this router. We're just gonna uh, kind of transform that to meet our own needs. So just like we did yesterday with changing users to to do's, we're gonna do the same thing with movies. So let's start up at the top and we will Okay, yeah. The instructions for this are not explicitly, they're stated, but the code isn't here. So you need to pay special attention to this part. So users, we're gonna change our users router to movies router. Routes gets to change it over here to movies. Then we're gonna go down. So we did line 10. We're gonna do our routes down here. So slash movies will use our movies router. So all we've done is changed our movies router required slash routes movies, which we, we have to rename that file. We haven't done that yet. And then movies, uh, any path that starts with movies is going to use our movies router. So let's go into our routes, rename users movies.js so we've done that we've renamed everything now what we need to do is go and work on our route so let's go over to the route we're going to create a controller because we don't have a controller yet Let's get rid of this route that we currently have. We don't need that. The controller is technically created in the next step, but let's go ahead and just touch it now so we can use proper file pathing to get to it. So we're gonna touch, oh, we don't have a controllers directory yet. So we're gonna do mkdir controllers. We're gonna touch controllers movies.js so now we have that module that controller module that we're going to go and, and screw around with in just a second but before we do that 
let's stub it up inside of our router so that we have access to those functions. So const movies controller equals require dot dot slash. We go down to our controllers, movies. This is the part where people have the most trouble with Node, like starting off with an app, because you're going to have to create the controllers. You have to create the, you know, rename the routes. Uh, it, you have to create the models directory, add the model. Once you get all that stuff set up, the rest of the CRUD is just repeating that five-step process. You're not going to have to go creating new files all the time, unless we're talking about views. So getting that stuff stubbed up is really kind of the biggest obstacle at the beginning. Once you get over that, it's, it's really not too bad. It's just five steps over and over again, right? So we're going to have, again, in order to get to this router, this is our movies router. So the user has to use slash movies. In order to get that route slash movies slash new that we just created, we have to give it a path of slash new in our router. So we're going to say router dot get slash new and we're going to use our movies controller and write a function called new. That's going to be the function that we export, right? Because that's the purpose of that is to display a form that our user can enter a new movie. So let's go to the let's go to the, the controller function, stub it up. What's the first thing you think we're going to need up at the top of our movie? The controller. Model. Model. <clears throat> Const movie equals require dot dot slash. We'll go into our models. Movie. Okay. What else do we need? We have to export stuff, right? Module dot exports equals stub that up new again new is a protected word so we're going to have to call it new movie and stub up the function function new movie rec res and we'll just stub that up for now and just leave it there Anyone lost or confused as to what just happened? This is just rehashing what we did yesterday. Can you push, please? Yeah, will you? Please, thank you. Uh, and I did got lost after we wrote the uh, movies control require uh, controllers slash movies. Uh, and before the const movie required models movie of uh, line the movies controllers, uh, there was something there in between that I, I just didn't catch. Okay. Would, would you please repeat it? What we did is we changed our movie router. We adjusted our user router, turned it into a movie router because we're not using users for this app. And it's already all stubbed up. We already have all the code. We just have to change a couple lines. So we changed it on line 10, and we changed it on line 25. We renamed our routes. We made sure that we required our controller up top so that we have access to our controller functions inside of our router. Our router, we wrote a route for the uh, get request to slash movies slash new and connected that to our new function in our controller function. In our controller function for new movie, we required our model because that's what we're going to be using for CRUD operations. We're exporting that new function as new movie, and that's all we did. We just stubbed that up. So the next thing that we're going to do, the, what the, the purpose of this function is to do what? I've said it a couple of times now. What's what's the per the goal of this function? What is it going to be doing? We will actually render this, so we, yeah. we can see it. It's going to be a render rendering a form for us to create a movie. So res dot render. We want to make movies slash new. 
because we inside of our views directory, we're going to make a directory that says movies. That's going to house all of our uh, our movie uh, EJS views. And inside of that, it's, we're going to have a file called new.ejs. So let's do that. MKDIR views slash movies. If you want, you can go over here, just right click new file, new.ejs. So this is what's going to be um, displayed. Start with our boilerplate. Let's link our style sheet. Style sheets just slash style sheets. Or no, no, yeah. Style sheets slash style.css. We can call this Mongoose Movies. So we have our style sheet linked. We have our HTML boilerplate. We're going to copy and paste this form. It's ugly, but it works. So copy it, and then we'll talk about what's inside of it. Put that right in your body. So now our form here, you'll see, has a method, a post method to slash movies, right? Because that's what we're doing. Take a look at our CRUD chart. If we want to create a new resource, we have to submit a post request to slash the name of the resource. And that is a create function. That's the second half of this equation. We've gotten the first half done, right? We've got a new movie. We've got our form. We're good. Form's working. So we have this form. We have a couple things. We have an input with a type of text, name of title. Why is name important? Because that's the key in our object. Right. In our model, right? Yeah. That's what that's where we're going to be entering our data. Or that's what our data is going to be entering the database as. That's why all of these properties, all these inputs, have name attributes that match what's in our model. MPAA rating. Cast. We're going to have to do some magic with the cast, but that's okay. We'll discuss that here in a little bit. So that's what our form looks like. We have title, actor, separate with commas. It's good stuff. Anyone have any questions on the form? Cool. Let's test it out. We did. Form looks just like that. We're good. So now let's talk about the second half of this. We have to determine the proper route. Well, we've already got that, right? We already have it right here. It's a post request to slash movies. We just talked about that a second ago. So add the UI. We already have the UI. It's the submit button for our form. On to step three. We need a post request to slash movies. Let's go code that out. In our routes, we're going to go router.get. It's just going to be forward slash. The movies is implied because we're using our movies router. Movies control dot create. So create is the default name here for that function. We all good with that? Okay. So let's go over to our controller function. We're going to be adding a create. And let's stub that up. Function create. Right, res. So what we need to do is we need to use our movie model to create a movie and save it to a database, save it to our database. So this, I know this looks scary. We're going to talk about it. We're going to type all of this out, most of this out. Um, the first thing that we need to do 
is we need to add some information to this before we actually create the movie. Because we have to manipulate that data. We have to massage a little bit because it's not going to be perfect the way it comes in. Rec.body is going to send that list of cast members as just a string. It's going to be a string with comma separated um, actors and actresses. So what we need to do is we're going to have to split that array up uh, if it's not properly set up. So we're going to split that into an array at every point where there's a comma. So we're going to take away the comma and the space and turn it into an array. The other thing that we need to do is we need to remove the white space next to those commas. So that's what this line is going to do. This is a little bit of regex, which we're going to, we're going to learn. Uh, I don't remember when we learned regex. I think it might be next week. Um, and then this is converting our now showing checkbox uh, of nothing or on to a Boolean. So all this line does is turns our now showing checkbox into a Boolean, true or false. So let's type that out. Rec.body.now showing equals double bang rec.body.now showing. Again, all that's doing is turning that checkbox um, that comes in with either on or nothing to a Boolean. The next line, we're gonna, I'm gonna copy and paste this one because I don't wanna mistype it. Rec.body.cast equals rec.body.cast replace. This is using regex to take the white space away from our commas. So it'll just be name, yeah. comma, name, comma, name, comma, no spaces. You have, you have new showing instead of now showing. Thank you. That's why I should have just copied and pasted. Um, and then that last line, we'll copy and paste. If rec.body.cast, we're gonna say rec.body.cast equals rec.body.cast split at the comma. So if there are cast members, split them up wherever there's a comma. So that's gonna take all of those names that have commas in between them. And remember, we already got rid of the white space. So we just have name one, comma, name two, comma, and we are going to store them in an array. So this, that's gonna turn that into an array, which we can then use for our movie. Do this so you guys can see a little bit better. Now there are a couple different ways to write a create function using mongoose. I'm going to show you one this way now. We're going to show you a couple different ways, ways to write a lot of this stuff. Um, the way that we're doing it right now allows you to create, it, we're essentially inst instantiating our movie. We're making an instance of it because it's a class, right? It's a schema. So we're going to make a class in instance of movie, and we're going to call it lowercase movie. We're going to make that out of rec.body. Because rec.body is what? Where does rec.body come from? What does rec.body contain? The form submission? The form data. So we're making a new movie instance out of our rec.body, our, our form data. Remember when we did the classes lesson? When you instantiate a class, you can set a variable equal to a new class using the syntax. That's exactly what we're doing. That's all we're doing. We're saving it as, or we're setting it equal to this movie. And then Mongoose has the ability to save that movie and then provides us the option to use it, well, requires us to write a callback function to handle what happens afterwards. So let's type this out. We're going to say const movie, lowercase movie equals new movie rec.body. Then we're going to say movie. But you know what? Let's do this. Let's console log movie. Actually, we're doing that anyway in the line below. So movie.save. 
and this is where our callback function goes. So we're going to write function ERR, open it up. If there's an error, so error handling, if error, then we're going to return res.render movies new. So we're just going to re-render that page if there's an error. If there's not an error, we're going to console log the movie. And then we are going to redirect back to that same page. Res.redirect. Eventually, we're not going to do that. For right now, that's what we're going to do. We're going to redirect back to that movies slash new page. So this is one way to write this. This is the way that you're going to see in the Mongo docs, the MongoDB documents. I'm going to teach you all sorts of other cool ways to do this that look so much cleaner and neater, but you have to know how to do this. You have to know how to instantiate that object or that class and then save it using an error first callback so that you can handle your errors and then do whatever functionality comes after that if you don't have an error. Questions? The, the, the way I'm going to teach you to write mongoose functions are a whole lot less convoluted than this. They're going to make a whole lot more sense. So bear with me. We'll get there. Can you push your code really quick? Yep. Let's yeah. test it first before I push. I'm going to refresh movie slash new. Let's type a movie. Uh, Lion King, 1994. James Earl Jones. Jonathan Taylor, Thomas. Who else is in that movie? Eh, whatever. That that's good enough. We get add movie. It's not now showing. Uh oh. That's a problem. What happened? Not found. Post movies. I mess up my routes. Huh. Nobody corrected me on that. That's why I didn't push my code. That should be a routed up host. Did you see how I, I debugged that? So I looked at it when I got that error and I saw that I had a 404. 404 post movies. I got the post request, but it says 404. That means I don't have a route that matches that request, which is straight where I went. I saw that error. Now we refresh, we can continue, and it should, then you'll see, add our movie. Let me push. So now we're adding movies to our database. How are we feeling? Is there a reason that we want to redirect back to the form? For right now, that's what we're going to do just so we can enter okay. multiple movies. We don't also don't have anywhere else to go yet because we only have one view. So Thank we're you. eventually going to modify that up a little bit. Ben, could you quickly go over, um, I guess, like going from the model, creating the data, I guess, in the terminal, and then like where we are now, just again. Sure. So what we did when we created data in the terminal is we used the shell, or the, or you can you do it either in the mongoose shell or mongo shell, or the node REPL. But what we're doing now is we're setting it up so that we don't have to enter data into the terminal to get it into our database. That data that we just entered, this the Lion King movie I entered, that's in my database now. It lives there. Like if I restart this server and start it back up, it's it's still there. It's it's persistent. It's it's gonna live there until we delete it. So what we did to do that is in our controller function, 
well, let me back up. Let me go to the movie. So we, we have our data schema, right? Which is showing the template of what our data should look like as a title, a release year, all that stuff that we set up. So this is, consider this like a predefined template for what our data is gonna look like. We're exporting that as a model, which we can then use via Mongoose to manipulate our data, which is what we're doing in our controller functions. That's literally what controller functions do is they house all of the functions to manipulate our data and render our views. So we have this create function here. And when we create a movie, we're taking uh, the rec.body, which is our form data from our view that the user is submitting. We're massaging it a little bit, taking care of the checkbox thing, replacing the comma, the white space next to the commas, splitting the cast string up into an array of individual cast members. And then we're using it to create a new movie. That new movie is then saved in the database. And then once it's saved, we have this callback function right here. And this callback function is saying, hey, once the movie's saved, execute this callback function. And the callback function contains two things. It says one, if there's an error, just bring them back to the new movies page. Realistically, if there's an error there, what we should do is we should be console logging the error. It doesn't really make any sense to render the page again without saying, hey, you have an error. That's, that's bad, bad news. We shouldn't be doing that. Um, and then what we're doing if we don't have an error is the same thing. We're redirecting back to the page. So we're going to be going through this flow again with the rest of our CRUD operations for the movie reference. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna be able to read data. We're gonna index our, all of our movies, and then we'll work on showing details for a single movie. So we'll be able to edit movies. And that's how we're gonna be going about doing this. Does that help? It does, thank you. So the rest of, uh, the rest of this afternoon, what are we doing? We're going to be reading. There's really only a little bit left to this lesson because a lot of it's extra material. I would like to get a head start on some of the lesson material for tomorrow. So we're going to go ahead and take lunch, come back in an hour. We're going to use our model to read data. We'll set it up so that we can, we can do that. And then we'll get a little bit into referencing or uh, embedding. We'll talk a little, little bit about that. And I'll give you guys several hours today to start working on flights. Is that fair? Cool. Any questions before we break for lunch? Um, yeah, I, well, I have errors on mine, but um, it's not like when I click new movie, it just says it's a 404 page, but I can't figure out where. Um, Do you have a matching route? Movies not new. You have a get route and a post route, or do you have two get routes? I have a get route and a post route. Okay. Can I see your screen? Your get movies new is a 404. So that means your movies router is probably not set up. So let's go ahead and check your server.js. Uh, yep. Also, okay. can I see your uh, controller functions again? Um, yeah, try it now. There you go. Cool. I'll see you guys in an hour.
All right. So we left off with a second here. Get situated. All right, sorry. We got, uh, we finished out our ability to create uh, movies. And what we're going to be doing next is using our model to read data. So we're going to be able to index all of our movies. Um, the ability to use Mongoose queries is extremely powerful and very versatile. So you can use it for a whole bunch of different things. Um, for example, if we wanted to find a movie where it had a PG rating, where the release year was less than 1970, and Bob Hope is in the cast, we can sort by reverse title, limit the search to three options, and uh, select the title and release year. It, I mean, this is, you can chain ridiculous stuff together for Mongoose queries. We're probably not gonna see a ton of very specific examples, but um, we're gonna start with the basics, right? We gotta, we gotta teach you how to use find before we start teaching you how to use all this other stuff. Um, the three major methods you're gonna be using for querying data in this course are find, find by ID, and find one. Um, find by ID has some Additional, but there's also find by ID and delete. Uh, there is find by ID and update. Um, but, but as far as just finding records um, or documents, these are the three methods that you're going to be using. If you wanted to find all of something, find is the one that you would want to use. And what you can do is you can use movie.find and just leave the inside of this object blank and it will find all of the movies. Right now, this is searching for movies that have an MPAA rating of PG, but if you wanted to find all the movies, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you're gonna do this in a second, you would just leave this MPAA rating PG part blank and just leave this as an empty object. You still need the callback function, the error first callback function, and then you're gonna return movies. And that will give you the result of your query. That's then passed to this callback function where you can then do whatever you want. This is typically where you're going to have your res.render for something like this. If you're doing a search for something, you're most likely going to be rendering something. And this is where you would return it to the page. So, a, um, and we're going to go over this uh, after the example, but I'm going to put you into breakout rooms here in a minute and have you work on this as a group. Uh, we're going to talk about exactly what I want you to do. And then we're going to come back in 20 minutes and then do it. So movie.find is what you're going to end up using, right? The other two that we want to talk about are find by ID and find one. Find by ID is going to be, you're going to be searching based on the object ID. And this, the syntax for that, typically you're going to be passing that object ID in as a request parameter. So rec.params.id, right? We saw that yesterday. Typically, you're going to search for it by ID, so you don't need the object here to search for that. It's just movie.findbyid, search for it by its ID, again, error first callback, and then you're returning the movie as movie. So the document that matches this ID will be returned as movie and then can be used inside of this callback function because you're passing it as an argument to this callback function. So if you wanted to, for example, return that to a view, you would res.render movies slash show, and you would pass to that the movie object that is defined right here. Works the same way with find one. Find one just finds the first document that matches the query object. You're not gonna use this one very often. It's mainly gonna be these two. So what I want you to do in your breakout rooms here in a second is follow those steps. I want you to identify the route, uh, in add, add a UI uh, to trigger the request, adding an all movies link 
next to the new movie link that we added to our index.ejs. I want you to define the RESTful route. I want you to stub up and export the movie's controller index action. And I want you to code the index action. The, the index action should use the movie model to query for all movies. As mentioned above, use an empty query object to retrieve all the documents. Then you need to render a views movies index providing to it the movies that we just returned. See those movies here, find. This is gonna be empty. You're gonna have a callback function. This right here inside of this function is where your render is gonna go. Res.render, whatever the thing is you wanna render, comma, an object, movies, colon, movies. Because you're gonna pass movies as movies. That's where you're gonna put in there. Uh, then you're gonna need to create an index, obviously, EJS, uh, to display uh, all the movies that we just did. Here's most of the markup. The part that has been left out in the markup is the JavaScript, the EJS, because you guys know how to do that. So you'll see here that you just have the title, you have a list of movies table. You're going to have to write the line of EJS to iterate over the movies using for each. You're gonna to have to finish this ternary to display yes or no for now showing right here. That's what this is referring for, we're referring to. And then you're gonna to have to close the for each using EJS here. So you have to finish those three parts of this EJS. 20 minutes. How are we feeling? Feel like you can accomplish that? I know you can accomplish that. You know, you know pretty much everything to, to do that. Let me pause the recorder. I'm gonna put you out in your rooms. Does anybody have any questions before I put you in your rooms? Cool, that makes it easy. And away you go. So let me share my screen and I will go over the solution here. So the first thing that we had to do is identify the RESTful route, right? So what is the route that we need to get if we wanna get all of our movies? Get. Right. Get to what? Index. A get to index? Yeah. Post What's the route? The past. Movies? Oh. Just slash. Movies? Just slash. Just forward slash? Uh, yeah. Slash movies. Slash, slash movies. Oh. Is it yeah, slash yeah. movies or is it slash movies slash index? Slash movies. movies. Slash movies. Look at our chart right here. To get slash movies. The controller function is going to be called index. And that's to get all movies, to read all movies. So we've identified that route. Let's add a UI to trigger that request by adding a an all movies link next to the new movie link. So we're going to go to our view. New. Or no, that's in our index, right? Yes. Right. So we'll do that. I'll put a line break in there. So we'll put an A tag slash movies. We're gonna call that all movies. Sanity check. Let's go to localhost 3000. A hey, new movie, all movies. Cool. What happens when we click that? Nothing. Why? Because 404, we don't have a route, right? So next step. We added our UI. Now we need to define the RESTful route. Let's go do that. Let's go over to our routes, movies. We want to do a router.get. Do I need to put slash movies here? No. Who thinks I need to put slash movies here? Okay, good. Hopefully none of you raise your hands. No, because it's implied, right? Because we're in the movies router. Movies control dot what index index 
right? Because we're using our index, look at our CRUD chart, index right there. So next step, stub up and export the movie's controller index action. Controllers, let's go up here, index, stub it up down here, function index, red res, okay, that's stubbed up. Now we wanna code the index, index action to use the movie model to query for all movies. As mentioned above, use an empty object to retrieve all the documents. And then we're going to render our movies index EJS. So if I'm gonna use my movie object, my movie model to find all of the movies, what's that gonna look like? Movie.find. Find, okay. Empty object. Okay. Uh, and then a function. A call. With a comma, right? Yeah. Okay. Then what? Error first. Error and then movies. Movies, because that's what we're returning. And we open up our callback function. And we do what inside? That's where our render goes, right? Res dot render. We want to render what? Movies slash index. Index. Cool. So we have to, we have to pass that something, right? How do we have to pass that? Uh, movies colon movies. Yeah. We're passing this movies refers to what we see on the EJS page. This movies refers to this. These two things are the same. This is different. So this is, if I left this like this on page, this would still work, but I'd have to do on my for each on this for each loop, I'd have to do movies on page dot for each. This movies and this movies, identical. This one is the one, this is just what we're labeling it. We are coming up, we're coming up with all three of these names, but I wanna be very clear that just because this, these all say movies, they're not all technically the same thing. This one is what is what we're calling the movies when we return them. This is the result of our query. This is the same result of our query. This is just what we're labeling it when we pass it to the view. And you need that key for when you pass it to the view. Is that correct? Yes. You can't just you can't just say object movies. Correct. I mean, you could say. Um, I don't know if that'll work. I know that works in React. I don't know if it works with. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what. We'll try it out. So we'll go edit, uh, we're, we're gonna go put in our EJS and we'll test it out. So we have to go create that, right? Views, movies, new file, index.ejs. Well, let's just copy and paste this. And then we'll make the adjustments that we need to make. Sanity check, let's make sure it works. Unexpected token. Uh, it's probably because we have unfinished code here. So we're going to need to fix that. So let's start with writing that line of EJS to go over our movies. Right? We're passing it as movies, right? So EJS movies dot for each. What goes in here? Function M. M. Okay. And then you're like that. How do we want to do it? Like that? And then you need to put the end of the function on the other side of the table body or the okay. other end. Okay. I don't know what TR is, whatever that is. Should I have it like that? Close the squid. Okay, I'm gonna open the squid over here. We move this. Cool. What next? 
for the ternary. How do I do that? Movie dot not now showing. A string of if it is showing, and then a colon for a string if it's not. Okay. Yes or nope. Yep. Yes. Nope. Should that work? Oh, can't do an arrow function. Yep. Try that now. Hey, look at that. Well, that's weird. That's okay, though. That's because I, I have stuff in my database that has cast members in it with object IDs. But yeah, that looks great. Now let's go test out your uh, your question, Nick. Let's go back to our controllers. Let's just put movies here, see, see what happens. Would you please push this code, Ben? Yep. Hey, that works too. That's a newer, uh, uh, I think it's ES6. Um, you're able to do that with objects, which returning it's, it and passing it to things. The, the, that's the name you want since you didn't yeah. specify. So you're going to see that in React all the time um, when we do that in, uh, in React. So we can do, we can do that. I'm going to leave it like this, but you can totally do it either way. I think I'll probably still do it that way just to make sure. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Yeah. Let me push this. Hey, Ben. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like a really obvious error that I'm getting, but I can't quite figure it out. Um, I'm getting a fail to look up view of movies slash index in views directory, okay. but I can't quite, before I like pull your code, I'd like to figure out why that is. I'm also Perfect. getting the same error. Let's see what you got. Okay. Let me reorganize my screen. Okay, so get this out of the way. All right, so yeah, whenever I think I, I know what it is. Oh, <laughs> so let's, let's take a look at your controller function. Yep, right. yep that's what it is. So when we render, mm -hmm. what's the difference between a, a render and a redirect? When do we use a slash and when do we not use a slash, a, a leading slash? Oh, oh my God. If it's so a that... redirect, yes. If it's a render, no. Is that delete, delete, that, delete that slash, mm -hmm. it'll work. Okay. Is that because redirect is a URL mm -hmm. and like render right. is a URL? And you mm -hmm. okay. That's if you refresh, that should work. Cool, awesome. Okay, thank you. Connection that you all just made took me literal weeks to learn when I was taking this course. Hey, <laughs> so good job. Keeping it together, like which is going to what folder and which mm -hmm. is at the URL. Mm -hmm. uh, before I pull your code, Ben, uh, I also am mm -hmm. uh, getting an error. I can't, uh, my node one crashed, so yeah. Um, and the error I get is that route.get is not a... Requires a callback it, function, but got an object. Who can help debug this? We've seen this multiple. Router.get. Oh, wait. Where is the route? What, what is that? Oh. Hey, index. What, what is that doing there? Could any be there? Who sees it? Slash. That's all. We, like when we when we were working in the group, we we kind of like finangled all of our routes to like weave in and out to views, movies, and decks. Um, but that might be what's going on because you pro you probably change something later to like to that certain route. So if you just change index to just that slash. Yep. Oh, so just remove this. Yeah. Yep. See if that helps. Okay, now let's take a look at your index function. That wasn't what was causing this error, but that was a problem. So let's go take a look at your controller where you're linking. 
Are you exporting an index function? Uh, oh, that's why. <laughs> okay, this work. should work now. Yay. Okay, yeah. Cool. I'm Thanks. still getting an error. Cool. You want to share your screen? Yeah. This is what I'm getting. There's probably a route problem. Slash movie slash all. Where did you come up with that? Take a look at your browser. What's that route with slash movie slash all? Oh, what? That's probably it. Is that your, uh, do you, did you link that in your, go to your index.ejs? Yeah, that, that looks right. I don't, did you type all into your browser? Uh, I think when I was making it on my own, I did. Okay. But yeah. Okay, cool. I think that works now though. Thanks. Yep. Anybody else? I am getting um, a model error collection must be a string. Let's see it. I'm sorry, technical difficulties here. Okay, scroll up a little. So your movies dot for each, you have the for each there, but you don't have anything inside of it. So you need to bring line 25 down to between 34 and 35. You're also printing that line as well. Yeah. The, the first squid before movies, get rid of that equal sign or minus sign, whatever it is. Oh, thank you. And then I close it out here, right? Yeah. Try that. Um, all right. Mongo error collection name must be a string. Okay, so let's take a look at your controller function. It's like Okay, so you're passing movies as movie. Add an S to the end of that. I bet you it works now. Okay, let's see if we got the same error. Oh, 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 I see it. Man, that's, that's fun. So... Look at line one and line two. What's happening there? You, you, I think you, when you command clicked somewhere and added something, delete everything on line one. What did I do? I don't even and know. Then, and then make line 10 a capital M. Now try it. Sometimes that happens when you command click things. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, it's the same thing. Yeah, so it says collection must be a string. Okay. On line 24, you need to capitalize also. Nope. No. You don't. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Sorry. God. Oh, David. oh, yeah. What is that going on there on 22? Get rid of that comma get all. I don't know what's, what's going on there. Oh, yep. We were, uh, okay. Oh, I think we're happy now. Hey. Cool. Yay. Thank you. Uh, yep. 
each cool. debug feels like a mini roller coaster of emotion. I it's know. Great. Right? There's like plot twists, there's, there's an arc. It's great. That's what makes it fun. Who else? Anybody else? Cool. Um, what we're going to do, uh, we have a couple extra things on this uh, lesson. Instead of starting with tomorrow's, I'm just going to go through the rest of the, the bonus stuff on this lesson. Um, and we're going to talk about some of that instead because I don't want to get into tomorrow's stuff. We're going to leave tomorrow's stuff for tomorrow and we'll just give you extra time to work on your lab today. So one of the other things that we can do now is we can refactor our index view. Uh, or now that we have an index, we can update our redirect and our create function, right? Because our create function right now, whenever we create a movie, it's taking us back to our movies page or our new movies page. We can just adjust that. So now that when we create a movie, it'll actually take us to our list of movies, which is a whole lot more useful, right? So that's good. Another thing that we can do is uh, Mongoose can automatically create a created at uh, and create update and updated at field on every document. Um, to take advantage of that, we just have to provide a second argument to the schema and set a timestamps property in it as follows. So let's go back over to our model. And right after this uh, closing bracket here, we're gonna put a comma, we're gonna open up another bracket, and we're gonna say timestamps true. And all that does is it adds, if you look at Atlas here, it's going to add these two fields, these created at and updated at, so that you can see when your data was created. That way, if you want to sort things by the time that or date that they were entry, entered into the database, you can do that. Uh, you can also, I'm pretty sure you can also sort them by object ID and it'll do the same thing. But sometimes it's nice to know when you've created something because it'll actually put a date stamp on it. You can't get a date out of the object ID. Cool, we did that. Um, so we're gonna do some of the further study here stuff. Um, define, uh, to define default properties or default values for a property. Say that we want the default year. If the user doesn't enter a year when they're entering a movie, we want it to be whatever. We can put 2000, 2000 stupid. We can put 2020, right? If it's a new movie, we're assuming they're entering. Let's assume it's, it's, come, it's come out this year. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our syntax here in our model. And for release year, we're going to delete this. We're going to open up an object here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say type number comma default 2020. So now, if our user doesn't enter, I'm going to show you this in action here. If I got a new movie, blah, 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 two, add movie, it should oh, release your null. Hmm. What did I miss there? Well, that's weird. We have to restart the server. Default would be a blank. Well, that's strange. Release Do you have to like that into the view? 
in some way so that it can parse a blank. It should. It should automatically enter that. Um, it didn't work because rec.body.release year already exists. That's why. So we can, oh, if I'd have read the friggin' instructions, uh, we can fix that by entering this property. So essentially, we just have to add an extra thing in here into our controller function that says if a property is empty when we're entering it into our field to just delete it from the object. So that's what's happening here. So let's adjust our Boolean first, and then we'll go and adjust that. So let's delete this, open up the object. We're going to say type Boolean default false. That way we have multiple things going on in here. And then in our controller function for when we're creating movies, right beneath this line right here, we can go through the object that we're getting in rec.body. Rec and if there's anything that's blank, we're just going to remove it from the object. And if it's removed from the object, then that default will kick in. So we're just going to use a for loop. For let key in rec.body if rec.body key is blank. Oops. Then delete rec dot body key. Very, very handy little piece of code there. That's a very handy piece of code. So now if we do that again, new movies, blah, blah. Uh, we'll say derp and derpy. We add movie. Now we get 2020 as our default. Everyone see why that happened? I want to show you exactly why that happened. So what I'm going to do, you don't have to type this in, but I want you to see this. When we're creating a movie, I'm going to, we console log the movie, right? Uh, let me look at one of the ones where we had Yeah, you're seeing it here after it's been created. So let's console log it. I'm going to move this console log up. Actually, I'm going to put another console log here. And I'm going to say console log rec.body. Rec.body. So when we create a new movie without a, um, a date on it, we hit add movie, pull this up so you can see it. Right here is what we're, what we're uh, bringing in. And you see that the release year, because it's blank, is just technically an empty string. And Mongo sees that, and Mongo, Mongo sees that, and it's all right, all right, well, there's, it's an empty string. It's not nothing, because it exists. It's an empty string. So that's what it's doing, it's setting it equal to an empty string which turns it into null because we've given it a default property type of number. So that's what's happening there. We good? That help? Console logs. They're wonderful. Use them to help you debug everything. And take them out of your code before you submit your projects. Cool. Um, the other thing that we can do is um, we can provide a function to return a default value. Um, when we use this method, the property's default value will be the value returned by the function. So we can take that silly little default function and make it default to the current year, like this. So instead of in our, let's go back to our model here. Instead of putting default 2020, we can say default, and I'm going to break these into two lines here. So they're a little bit easier to read. Yeah, 
that one, and that one. Pull this back down. So instead of 2020, we're going to say function, open it up, return new date dot get full year. Oops. Invoke. Let's give it a whirl. Make a new movie. Blah, 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 two, the sequel. Leave that blank. Still has derp and derpy. Now we've got 2020. So now we're using a function inside of our default values. Isn't that neat? You're going to use that for flights. So what else can we do? Let me push this then. I, then I got one more thing. I'll push it when I'm done. Uh, proper, properly implemented data validation will help prevent bogus data, uh, data that doesn't conform to the schema from being saved in the database. Um, there are several built-in validators we can use, uh, but there are so many flexible options as far as uh, Mongoose middleware. So let's take a look at the basics here. Movies should not be allowed to be created without a title. We can make it required, right? So let's go into our title here. And again, this is going to be a type string required true. So with that in place, if we try saving a movie without a title, we'll get a validation error and it won't be saved. So let's see what happens if we do that. I'm gonna do this, delete this, hit add movie. Well, nothing happened. What happened here? I hit post. What's happening? It's required, so it's not gonna let you do anything since it's right. nothing typed in. But why is it going back to it's redirecting page? you back to that page if it's not filled out properly? Because there's an error. Right. Right. It's not it's not redirecting, it's rendering the page again. Remember that line? If error return res.render movies new. That's confusing because that doesn't tell us we did anything wrong. So yeah, we can redirect there. You know what else we can do? We can also console log. So let's do that. Let's, let's see what that error looks like. So we're going to say if error, let's turn this into a function. console log error and then return that uh, res.render. Now we do this now, 1994, derp and derpy. Now you're going to see right there. Hey, look at that. It's going to show us our error. Path title is required and it pops this error out right here. Movie validation failed. Console logs are awesome. Would this be an okay place to use an alert? I know we usually don't use alerts, but. What I would do is I would display a message back to the page. Um, I would render, I think the appropriate way to do this would be when you render uh, your movies page, uh, this is, if, if I lose you here, that's okay. Um, what I would do is I would, when I render this, render the error as error and then display that on the page. The problem with that is that you're going to have to change your render for the regular new page to display error as null. That way you can set up conditional rendering so that if there's an error, it displays it at the bottom of the page. But if not, 
it just it just doesn't display anything. So you won't see an error down here unless something happens. Okay. Well, let me just let me just do that real quick. So we're going to render that as error. Uh, let's that wouldn't we would need to change. I'll tell you what. Before I do that, let me push this. Add error handling. Mm -hmm. So if we pass that as error to this page, we have to change our regular render for the new page to include error null, or you just make an empty string that works too. I like that better. So now both, both places that we're rendering our movies page, we have an error being passed to it. It's either a, a blank space or it's the actual error. So what we can do is if we go into that movies new and put down at the bottom beneath our form, uh, let's say an H1 with some squid. Error. Now if we refresh, Go to movies new. If we make a mistake, notice how we don't see anything down here. But if we make a mistake when we enter something, we hit add movie, we have that error pop up. That's hot. Right? And you could always clean that up a little bit and have conditional statements like, you know, if uh, you, you could make it a little bit better. Uh, than that, right? Because you have error dot message, right? Because yeah. the error is, yeah, you could clean it up so that it displayed movie validation failed or something like that. You just have to kind of play around with it. Googling will get you get you where you need to be for that. You know what? I'm actually going to leave that in the code because I think that's cool. So I'm going to leave it. That's I think like console log is great for us, but people on the page, you know. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, so we can also specify a min and max value. So again, again, for our examples, uh, let's go up to our model. If we want the minimum to be 1927, we can do that. And if they enter something that's not within the specified range, it'll throw an error. Right? We can also do, uh, for an MPAA rating, we can set up an enum. And an enum will make it so that they have to pick from one of those values. And the nice thing about using an enum is that you can set up those pre predetermined values in a Dropbox for the user. So that it's just one of those four things. So it's, it just makes it harder for the user to screw something up. And I mean, we're already using our Dropbox already has those, so it works anyway, but you could totally set, set that up that way. So that it has to be one of those values. So, and again, there's a note here. Your first instinct may be that validation is unnecessary on this property because the user is restricted to the choices in the form select, but it's quite, e quite easy to bypass such client side validation. Therefore, it's always a good idea to validate on the server just better code to validate on the server. Anybody have any questions about this stuff? Um, I have to be honest, I got lost in the create function when you're adding that stuff in there. Can we go over it again? Sure. So create function. Go full screen. So in our create function, we've got a lot going on. I get that. I know this is I, this can be a tough example because we we have so many things going on. But I'm gonna I'll break down every single thing we've got going on in this function. Normally, your create functions are gonna be three lines of code. Um, this is ridiculous. So what we have to do is when we create 
the first thing we have to do is we have to uh, deal with our checkbox. Because we have a checkbox, we have to say, okay, if the checkbox is clicked, we're gonna set rec.body.nowshowing to true. If not, set it to false. That's what this line of code does. This line of code replaces all of the blank spaces next to our commas, it just deletes them. So that what we can do is we can split our cast by wherever there's a comma. So these two lines deal with being able to turn that list of cast because it's just a string, right? That th the user is entering a string with a you know comma separated, um, uh, comma separated values. And the way that we turn that into an array is by doing this. It's just, it's just a lot of code. This right here, for let key in rec.body, all this does is it deletes any properties of that object, that rec.body object, that are not filled in. Because if it's a blank string, our data validation won't work on our model. So that's what's happening here. So all of this is just scrubbing our data. That's all it's doing making it so that it'll look good when we, or that it'll work when we pass it into this create function. So then what we do is we're defining a new movie here. And we're saying this movie variable is gonna be equal to new movie. We're instantiating that movie with rec.body. We're then using that instantiated movie. We're saving it with a callback function, error first callback function. That will handle our error. So if there's an error, it's gonna re-render the page with the, with the error message. If not, it's gonna console log the movie and it's going to redirect back to the movies list, the index page. So that's what's going on for this entire function. Realistically, your, your functions are gonna look like this. To start, if we create rec res, uh, movie dot create um, rec dot body uh, and you can do dot then it, well we'll get into the it's going to be like three or four lines of code rather than that ridiculous nonsense there are much cleaner ways to write it I just I have to show you these ways first because this is how you this is how you're going to see it out in the wild but you can use dot then with um, uh, with mongoose methods, and it just makes it so much cleaner. We're going to see that tomorrow. I think we're going to see that tomorrow. Now I want to go look to see if we're going to see that tomorrow. I'm pretty sure we rewrote the flights to deal with that. Uh, betting, betting. Let's see. Mm -hmm. No, I may have left it. I will teach you how to do it that way because it just it makes me happy when things are nice and neat and organized, and it's just more work. Um. But yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll teach you how to do that. Any other questions? We're definitely gonna do that when we get into um, Game Goose or whatever app we decide to build. If we wanna look at that here, I can demo what that looks like in Game Goose because I know I have it written that way there. So look at our controller functions in here. Okay, that's a bad example. <laughs> uh, I guess these are all kind of complex examples because there's a lot going on here. But game.find, you find the game, then you pass the game to a render function. What's a better example here? So if we're creating something, again, scrubbing data right here, message.create, rec.body, then arrow function, redirect. Cleaner. You don't have to write all that extra stuff out. It just, it looks cleaner. And I will teach you how to do this. But 
this is relatively new compared to this. It didn't always used to work with dot then. So we have to teach you the old way because that's how you're going to see it when you when you're out in the wild. Anything else? I'm going to set you guys loose on your lab. So what your lab is, this is going to be a three-part lab. Uh, have we decided when we're going to make this do? Monday? Not Monday, because they Monday. won't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Not Monday. How about Wednesday? Next week. That's what I was going to say. That's that sounds perfect. good. Perfect. So we're going to give you a week on this. We'll update that to reflect the due date on here. Um, but let me pull that up. The first part or part of your lab uh, is going to be to use what you've done today using the movie method on a flight model. So you're going to make an app that tracks flights. It's going to be called Mongoose Flights. This is going to be your go-to app for learning how Mongoose and MongoDB and Node, all this stuff work together. You're gonna to use this as a reference for damn near everything uh, for this unit. So you have to do a good job on this lab. Um, the final version, one through three combined, will be a deliverable. Do not fall behind on this. You wanna stay on top of this. If you wait to do all three parts of this, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You do not wanna do that. Um, you're gonna start by using the express generator to make your, your project configure your database module. So it does exactly what we did, only instead of movies, you're gonna do flights. You're gonna create a flight model with the following properties. You're gonna implement the following user stories. As a user, I want to view a list of all flights, i.e. an index view that displays each flight's airline, airport, flight number, and departure date time. I want to create flights by entering the info on a page, i.e. a new view, that has a form and submitting it. When I submit the form, I should be taken back to all flights. As a user, I want to be able to access each view via navigation bar at the top of the page. Right now, that should have links to all flights and add flights. There are some hints. There are some bonuses. The bonuses are um, you can create an in-memory flight using uh, This is just so that you are having the date. What is this? Date. You can read through this. The bonuses on this are not, uh, not super important. Um, you wanna make sure that you're spending your time on getting the mongoose, mongoose code down. Um, if you want, you can sort. Um, and if the departure date has passed, you can use red text. I'm not concerned about the bonuses on this. Uh, conditional formatting is easy. Sorting is easy. You need to worry about the, the meat and bones of this before you start worrying about any of the other stuff. So, um, questions? This will be due next Wednesday, a week from today. The first part, is going to be the flights. The second part, tomorrow, we're going to be embedding tickets. So you're going to be creating tickets and embedding those into the flight. And then Friday, when we teach you referencing, you're going to be referencing departures to your flights. We're going to talk about the modeling on all that tomorrow, too. Stop the recorder. <laughs>